All right. Welcome back. We made it to episode five. We made it to episode five. Two addicts and a moron. Introductions. We're going to do this every time now. I'm Joey the moron. I'm just a regular dude. I'm a dad. I'm a boyfriend. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm normal in in most people's minds. And the fact that I'm not. I've never been addicted to drugs or alcohol. I uh, would be what these guys refer to as a normie. And um, and uh, I, I'm proud of that. So uh, <laughs> we learned last episode you're not looking for any more kids. Yeah, we learned last yeah. episode that I, if I have any, go fuck yourself. Um, yeah. And uh, so Joey the Moron. And then off to my left. To the left, uh, it's Jay Klein, uh, recovery-based hip-hop artist, motivational speaker, uh, co-host of this wonderful podcast. And uh, a member of the Austin, Texas recovery community. Mike Stuboy O'Brien, um, recovering addict, dad, boyfriend, just a, a normal person these days. Nice. Trying to uh, pass this message on so other people can see that there is a way out. There is a, a way to beat this. And hopefully you can take a little bit of everything that we say and use it as your own blueprint. Make it your own and fucking go defeat this thing. That's right. Amen. And then we get uh, we get these things started with the little tradition of ours. So um, uh, that's always led by you, Jay Klein. Go ahead and, and set us up, man. Yes. So uh, let's allow us to get present. Um, let us think about the addict out there still suffering. Maybe uh, a member that's in recovery and sobriety struggling right now. The family members going through it with them. And the ones that unfortunately could not make it back with us. Moment of silence. Thank you. All right, guys. So you're going to see it looks a little different today. I have a notepad. Um, we challenged the uh, our little you know community that we're trying to build here for this podcast. Mm to uh, send in some questions. And uh, I was bummed out that it didn't happen the time before when we sent it out. Well, you guys fucking responded. Yeah. And uh, we got we, we got a lot of really good questions that we're gonna address today. And I didn't want to um, shortchange anyone. So I, I have this notepad in front of me. We've been uh, uh, pretty good about, you know, free flowing our conversation mm -hmm. in these. And um, I think there was quite a bit to talk about, but now we're extending that a little bit and, um, so that's what I have here. But before we get into all of that, a new sponsor. Another one? Another one. Dude, every fucking week. Yeah. We're every week. This, roll out the red carpet. Rolling <laughs> out the red carpet. So Speaking of carpet. <laughs> we have Slither in the Vents. Mm -hmm. We have Melted Gummies with Carrot Sticks. Yep. And now we have Carpet Farming. Carpet, carpet Farming. Farm. <laughs> Car <laughs> carpet farming came to me uh, quite a long time ago when Mike uh, explained it to me. And I'm kind of ashamed of myself for not ever bringing this up mm -hmm. because it is we don't want to glorify, glorify or glamorize <laughs> this at all because it is pretty fucked up. But we're a silly podcast here, too. We're trying to make light of things. And carpet farming is uh one of the funniest fucking things i've ever heard in my life it's something you all have done and yeah, guaranteed I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you've been in our shoes you fucking searched the carpet so uh, <laughs> i'm gonna let our boy Stu um explain what carpet farming is so carpet farming um <laughs> anytime you run out of dope you can probably attest to this you, you can speak on this as well anytime you run out of dope it's like when you're an addict, it's the worst possible thing that can happen. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? So you will start searching everywhere for dope, like anywhere that you smoked, anywhere that you s broke shit up. So like I would be in my bathroom, like rubbing across the counter, like in just hoping that I have a shard that comes up, yeah. right? There's dirt, there's fucking <laughs> dust, ball hair, whatever. But if there's something crystally in there, it's going in my pipe, right? Along with the ball Along hair. Along with the, everything uh, else. Just scoop yeah. it all in there. That will all melt away. 
So <laughs> adds a nice little flavor, huh? Yeah, a little, little flavor. Was that mine? Maybe not. Yeah. Who cares, right? So this there's been many times where I've carpet farmed. Like that's when you get on your hands and knees and you fucking go farming in the carpet. It's like you're looking for crops, but you're not. You're looking for dope. And I've pulled up and smoked someone's toenail. <laughs> I've smoked a piece of rice. I've sp- like when you're high, they all look like oh, is that a piece was that of ramen noodle? I'm fucking, dude, I've smoked some glue. Yeah, I've smoked everything that I've ever found in the carpet. And like, in like, you will search. Like it's fucking like if you go to like a house where people ran out of dope. There's four or five motherfuckers <laughs> searching, for just carpet farming. So you took this another level when we talked about it. Talk about the balloon. So this is what I learned. It, look, don't go use this if you're still using. Try not to use this. for. But instead of carpet farming, that takes a long time. Yeah. If you get a helium b- a balloon and you rub it against your legs, the static that it brings up, you can run that across the carpet and it will suck shards to it. Don't use that. But that that's that's this is how deep I started looking on the Internet like this carpet farming sucks. I'm smoking all kinds of shit. I don't know what it is. What's the easiest way to find dope in the carpet? And I came across a balloon. Fucking who would have ever known? I've stuck things in my butt. Never a balloon, maybe. But now I had a fucking balloon that I could just rub. Go across the carpet, and guess what? Shit just sucks up to it. Should have right. should have got that on Shark Tank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, man. I'm in. <laughs> Fucking Mark Cuban, I'm in. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck would they say? Like, here's what we have. A He's a three, genius. Bam. Yeah. He's, yeah. We well, got Bill Nye, the fucking science guy over yeah. here, yeah. like uh, trying to figure out ways to get dope out of the carpet. I that yeah because you don't want to vacuum it because then you're vacuuming everything it's gone yeah yeah Yeah. and see my thing was more opiate so uh I'm not saying one is more important than the other but for me like that was my lifeline and Mm -hmm. I'd be damned if I'm gonna get sick so I made sure I knew where it was at Mm -hmm. all times like a like a newborn baby yeah like (laughs) (laughs) like I yeah um I will say though um when I did delve into uh to the meth world um there was a time uh when i was at a at, at a hotel go figure uh it was during like uh or around winter time and uh i was just so spaced out and i'm in my hotel room and i i, I swore i had some you know some other stuff on me still and uh i just i didn't know where it was so i'm i'm like on and now this was not a carpet this was hardwood mm-hmm. so when it's on hardwood, it's even worse because everything looks like a rock or yeah. a shard. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm down there. I'm fucking just like, yeah. like I'm like a like a archaeologist or something or yeah. a fucking <laughs> geologist trying to find the new geodote or something. Dinosaur fossil. You're just missing the hat and the whip and you're right. fucking Indiana uh, Jones. I'm out here, yeah, dress parking it. <laughs> um, and I found something. I'm like, oh my god, where did all this come from? Yeah, I'm like. I know I didn't have this much, so I'm. So I feel like my 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 night has been made. I didn't found all these little these little uh, crystal like pebbles. Mm. So uh, I taste it, pass the taste test. Uh, <laughs> 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 so I'm like, fuck, let's 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 you know, let's get this, let's get this going. Uh, and I got to doing it, and then I, I I'm thinking about it. I'm like, hold on, this isn't methamphetamine. This is salt, salt yeah, <laughs> from no. from the roads, <laughs> from the meltdown ice. I'm yeah. like, oh my god! Oh yeah, good how, times. How did that feel when you smoked a bunch of fucking rock salt? Uh, well, I didn't smoke it, so it's probably <laughs> probably worse than I did it the other way. Uh, but um, I swore, I I I still tried. I was in denial. I'm like, no, I didn't do that. I knew yeah. that it was just some bunk shit. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't yeah. that wasn't uh, road salt. Yeah, yeah. The old Epsom salt. Yeah, nice. I've done that before. I actually <laughs> bought we we got we got fucking blazed on a we bought an ounce before and my buddy that went to get it didn't check it when he got in the car and he comes back all the way to the house and he brings it to me and I'm like, bro, that's Epsom salt. Like that's Epsom salt. I said, you didn't check it. And he's like, no, well, he's like, 
they were some gangster ass motherfuckers. I really didn't want to check it. I said, bro, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. So we wasted money on that. <laughs> or he did. I didn't fucking pay for it. Yeah. Well, That's you got a whole, whole brick of Dr. Teal's. Yeah. <laughs> fucking no Epsom salt, bro. At least you can take a nice bath that night. Yeah. Huh? A good one. Yeah, that's get, get rid of all the old aches because uh, we don't have the dope. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah. So carpet farming. Carpet farming. Mm -hmm. That was uh, one of the most... Uh, drug induced ingenuity based things that i think i'd ever heard and it just made me have a a giggle so i thought we would talk a little bit about that um good times yeah. all right um <laughs> so we're gonna get into some of these questions now from uh you guys and i i think we've we've touched on them some of them a little bit but we're gonna try and address them a little mm -hmm. bit better you a little know more and, broad a little more as, broad as just to help everybody out um so uh, I'm going to go to the notepad here. All right. So um, first one from Tasha W. Um, and this is a curiosity of mine, too. It really is. I, this was something that I've been wanting to bring up for a while. So faith, um, faith in, um, in sobriety, I know, plays a giant role in in your guys's sobriety and how you got there mm -hmm. now um not everybody is there right. you know not not everybody um has that faith mm -hmm. and so what would you tell someone you, you know without being disrespectful to them and mm -hmm. their views on things and they are in a struggle uh, of being an addict and they want to get sober. What what would uh, y'all's advice be to that? So, this is a that's a really good question. Yeah, it's a really fun this is question. a this is a very sensitive topic when people first get into meetings and they first get sober. For a lot of people, um, like when I first got in the rooms, I was a Methodist, Crystal Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was my higher power. That was my everything right and the way that it works not it didn't work this way for me but a lot of people when you get in the rooms and they start talking about god and higher power a lot of times to turn off to some people because they've turned their back to god or they feel like god turned their back on them that's normally the way that it works is um when all these bad things happen to us in addiction i know for me my first thing is why, why are you doing this to me? God. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that it's not for me. I had to realize it's not God that does these bad things to us. It's the devil that does these bad things to us. But the first thing that, it, you know, he's the master deceiver. Right. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that we want to say is, well, God, why are you doing this to me? It's not God. It's the devil. And that's what I learned by going in the rooms. They say when you go in the rooms, look, you don't have to believe in God when you first get there. Just believe in a higher power, right? Mm -hmm. Your higher power can be anything. It can be a fucking doorknob. Yeah. Just something that's a power greater than yourself, that is more than yourself, that you can turn to. And hopefully, down the road, that turns into God. For me, the only time I talked to God during my addiction was for foxhole prayers. I think I said that before. Yeah. Like whenever I was in trouble, like if I got pulled over and I had dope on me, please don't let them find the dope on me. I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll stop today. You know, that type shit. And or if something bad happened to me or if I needed money, it was always I needed money because I was pawning everything. Uh, God, just let, let me make a good check and I'll, I'll stop. I'll fucking get my life together. And I would make a good check and that would never happen either. So when I got into rehab and when I got in these rooms, I had to realize like, you know what? I'm always asking God for stuff, but I'm never conversating with him. I remember talking to him. I don't even have a relationship with him. Yeah. And for some reason, through all the times that I should have been arrested or killed or fucking oh, all that shit, God kept me alive. Like, I never thought he was there, but he was there the whole time. He was just waiting for me to say, fuck, I'm ready to do this now. Right. And I think that's the reason he kept me alive this whole time. The reason I wanted to do this podcast whenever I got you, you guys to do this with me is because I feel like God saved me from all of that so I can pass this message on to somebody that maybe isn't a believer 
or maybe still has things about God that they don't want to believe in. Uh, God's been amazing to me. Like on the days that I'm having bad days, it's normally because I either haven't prayed yet or I haven't talked to God yet. And whenever I sit down and compose myself, now look, a lot of times I don't want to pray. I'm very hard headed and sometimes my ego gets the best of me. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking pray right now. I don't want to talk to God right now. But on the days that I'm able to compose myself and do it, he, if, if I put it on his plate because I can't handle it, then he always comes through for me. So I would say trust God a little bit, learn how to trust him, learn how to get that trust back for him, and then start asking him for things, start having conversations with him. I talk to him like he's a parent because that's what he is for me. He's a parent. And sometimes I don't agree with him. Sometimes, like, when I'm talking to him, it's not, sometimes I'll, I'll not cuss at him, but I'll, that's how I talk to him. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck are we doing right now? Like, I'm doing everything you want me to do, and this is still happening. And I have to realize, like, I don't have to understand him, but I know that he has, he has a place in it for me. It's kind of like this. Like, I heard this in a meeting before. Someone said um, they would rather live the rest of their life doing everything the way God wants them to do and then find out at the end that he's not real rather than live their life in sin and doing whatever the fuck they want and then dying and finding out, holy shit, he is real, and now I've got an answer to him. Right. So those are things that, you know, I get through with my faith. And, um, you know, we started going to a new church that's phenomenal, and I'm getting my faith even higher than it's ever been. So he does a lot for me, especially in recovery. Yeah. So great answer, Mike. Um, I can't stress the importance of having – and developing a relationship with a higher power, um, whomever you choose to call, uh, Gus, great universal spirit, God, um, heavenly father, whatever, whatever your, the title you want to give your higher power. Um, the importance of that is, is so crucial to this, to this, to being successful in this program and living a life and really Im uh, embodying that spiritual experience. Um, because it's getting you out of yourself because we live such a selfish way of life. And we've tried to have control and uh, wanted things to go how we wanted them to go. And when they didn't go it our way, then it's a problem. It's a temper tantrum. It's life sucks. Life's not fit. Like the point of that higher power is to establish that relationship so you can get out of yourself. So when you're going through something difficult, uh, when things aren't going the way you want them to or envisioning them to, you can reach out and you can give it up to them. Uh, and it's just, it's just about giving it up and getting out of self and yeah. trying to get that direction. Mm -hmm. um, foxhole prayers. I was, I was, any addict I'm sure can attest to this. We are the king of those. I'm in jail. Please, God. Please, God, let me get out of jail. Please, Mom. Uh, I'm begging, begging you, God, to get my mom to bomb me out of jail. Uh, please, God, let, let there be $20 fall out the sky today so I don't have to be dope sick. Uh, oh, please, God. Oh, oh, $20. I just found $20 on the ground. That's God right there. I know it is. Thank you, God, so much as I go and cop some drugs yeah um i'm gonna get a little personal just for the experience on this topic just because i think it's also something that uh a lot of not even addicts struggle with but anyone that's experienced you know life in uh certain churches uh which wh however you believe is i'm totally for uh but when i was coming up my life and my reasoning for using and i know a lot of others feel the same way is is always been fear-based Mm -hmm. living and operating in a life of fear. So coming up in, when I went to the church as a young kid, uh, the church that I went to, it was all fear propagation. Yeah. Um, don't watch PG 13 movies or radar movies. or You're going to go to hell. Don't swear. or You're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Don't have premarital sex. or You're going to go to hell. Uh, don't do this. Or you're going to go. Oh, I, I don't want to go to hell. Yeah. I don't want to go to hell. I remember one day I was so scared. I said the salvation prayer three times in one night. Because I was so scared I didn't want to go to hell But then I also didn't make sense to me Like Why would I go to hell If I said fuck <laughs> Yeah <laughs> I say that a lot Yeah, yeah. Ooh, like My favorite word You know like I, 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 I don't know it, All I know is I'm trying to be a good person today And uh, Actions will always speak louder than words um, You know Also another thing Developing that relationship with God is Or a higher power is Was also a struggle in the beginning Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. It took me a good six to nine months to really start developing my, uh, 
my relationship with my higher power yeah. because as I, I said, you know, the foxhole prayers, I only reached out to God when I needed something. So when it's time to not just guidance or something simple or just to, just to have communication with him, it felt weird because there's been such a disconnect for such a long time that it was like, eh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I, you don't want to hear from me, God. I, all I did was use you. Like hypocritical kind of hypocritical feeling. Yeah. And then it was also a thing where I lived a life of, uh, in such delusion because, you know, I want, I lived, a, I, li I was in the streets. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted, I wanted to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be a gangster. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I buy dope and I, I'm on all these rough blocks and I'm tough. I, like, yeah. Like what's up? Yeah. Yeah. I'm hard. Yeah. Motherfucker, you 160 pounds. Yeah. Ain't nobody scared of you. Yeah. Uh, the only reason why they ain't jump you or rob you is because you was bringing money to them every day. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, but so why do I say that? Well, because rolling out of bed and hitting your knees and then giving it up to something that's that you're relying on in faith, uh, it made me feel soft. It made me feel weak. Like, man, I, I, man I'm, 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 I'm hard, bro. I don't. Yeah. I'm not giving nothing up. I'm 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 gonna thug this out. Yeah, I'm gonna thug this out. I don't. I'm good. Uh, and that that's fine and all until uh, until like I said, you erupt or you're not good, and then it's like, mm -hmm. then what are you gonna do? Now I'm running to God. Yeah. If I just stay in that connection and stay with that relationship, and um, I don't today. I don't pray for anything. I don't or I don't pray for anything. You know, grandiose like, uh, I really want that new Porsche or uh, if you could just you know, uh, give me all the uh, money in the world or, you know, anything, you know, materialistic, you know, that you could think of. Like, I don't pray for that. I pray for guidance. I pray for wisdom. I pray for peace. I pray for uh, understanding. Or sometimes I just tap in with them just to, uh, just to say hello, you just know, to check yeah. in. just to check in. Yep. And, uh, God, it was so hard for me to hit my knees, man. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I had this precondition, like a thought in my head, like, that's a really soft thing to do when actually it's really the hardest thing you can do. And when I say hardest, I mean, you know, yeah. Like internally you're, you're giving up your power to something greater than yourself. And the opposite of fear is faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've heard that quote, let your faith be bigger than your fears. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and do I still have fears today? Sure. Mm -hmm. but I choose to be fearless instead of fearful. You know, like I don't operate in fear today. I'm not, I'm not waiting for something bad to happen. I'm not, uh, setting up scenarios and backup plans. Like I used to, to, <laughs> uh, you know, be prepared for the, for the inevitable, the yeah. unknown, like, mm -hmm. you know, just so I can, just in case it happens, I'm ready. Yeah. 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 So I, I, as a normie, you know, um, and I think there's two ends of, of what you guys just spoke about. But I think it's um, I think those foxhole prayers are probably a lot more prevalent across the board. Of course, right? oh, like yeah, I, sure. I feel like, you know, in a weird way, your addiction probably helped you out of the fucking foxhole, right? Mm -hmm. Is that is that kind of fair to say? Like out of that foxhole sort of mentality where it's just please God, please God, but someone who. I could see it very easily for a mother or a wife or a brother to be giving the foxhole prayer about their, about us, about you guys, mm -hmm. you know, about uh, on the other end of that, and you know, whatever you believe or mm -hmm. whether, you, whether you have a denomination of a certain religious group or sect, uh, or you're not prayer works, mm -hmm. prayer works. Yeah. Uh, but we also gotta be mindful of our expectations of our prayer. And not have expectations and just know that God's plan. <laughs> yeah. God's plan. Yeah. Yeah. Something my mom told me uh, when I first got sober, and she tells me this all the time. She's like, you know, every time I pray now, look, I'm 44 years old, but I'm still her little boy. Yeah, of course you are. And um, she said, you know, every time I pray now, I tell God, thank you for giving my little boy back to me. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. And I'm not going to cry. Yeah, you are. I'm a bitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm that actually, one caught me a little bit. I'm not going to lie bitch. to you, man. <laughs> yeah. I ain't no bitch. Doesn't it feel so good when your mom texts you that or says yeah. that to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got that just the other day. Yeah. I, she's, you know, she texted me, I'm so proud of you, Jacob. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you, mom. She goes, no, thank you. Mm. Damn. Yeah. No, thank you. That's pretty cool. Right. 
We haven't cried yet. Yeah, but we, it, it uh, may happen this yeah, episode. I don't know. <laughs> we're, that one. That one's pretty. Powerful. Yeah, those are, those uh, are the those are the best text messages you can get these days. You know, yeah. it's not like where are you? Fucking why aren't you responding yeah. back? It's like I'm so proud. Of Speaking you. of Foxwell prayers, after a while, I only reached out to my mom if she could send me twenty bucks. Yeah, mm-hmm. or thirty. Please, please, please. I need cash. Have me thirty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I only need you when I need you, and mm-hmm. you, you know, and it's yes, yeah. right. Uh, well, uh, as a as a father of a of a son, I have a daughter too, but um, you know, I try real hard to do that. You know, uh, to just send them a text because I'm I'm pretty tough on them. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, they got they're gonna have a million fucking friends. They got one dad, right? That's the way I look at it. And I, from time to time, I'll just send them. You know proud of you yeah proud of what you are and who you are and how you're doing it Mm -hmm. uh you know i hope that that type of shit matters um and it kind of makes me feel good that it uh, eventually it it will you know bro we all love power uh positive reinforcement right Right. Right. and i'm I'm a big believer in uh giving flowers and recognition yeah even if it's for something minor or even Mm. if it's just something random or yeah yeah you know Yeah. yeah Well, thank you, Tasha. Thank you, Tasha. Thanks, Tasha. Uh, that was appreciate that. Forgiven that project. Pretty cool. Shout out. And that's also great that we led that uh well, this is Easter Sunday. Yeah. Y'all yeah. will see this on Friday, <laughs> yeah. but happy Easter to all happy viewers Easter, out there. Everybody, Easter. yeah. Um, okay. Uh next question comes from Zach S. Mm. Um Dreams of Relapse. Um and I I'll I'll kind of extend on this one, but you know, we'll, we'll start with that. Uh, dreams of relapse. You know, uh, what, what were they like? What about as real as they possibly can be? Um, I don't have them so much anymore. Do you still have them? Uh, I haven't had one in a long, probably like four months, three months. I, I don't have them as much. Whenever I first got sober, I would have them all the fucking time. And, uh, when you say all the fucking time, like once, a probably week? once a week. Okay. And yeah, I would dude, wake up and they were, they were so real that I would wake up and for about the first five or 10 minutes, I would just lay there in just disgust. I'm like, fuck, I, I relapsed last night. And then I would start trying to re- remember what I did last night, but I could only remember my dream. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, fuck, like that was, that's, that was real. That fucking happened. Now I got to go back in and get a fucking 24 hour chip and start all over and mm-hmm. fucking be embarrassed in front of people. And then I would realize, oh shit, no, that, that was just a dream. Yeah, like, it didn't fuck, happen. It didn't happen. So, um, one thing that I I used to do, I don't do it anymore because I don't have them anymore. But here's a good tidbit for you. First place you normally go in the morning is your bathroom, right? Right. Mirrors. Everybody has a mirror in their bathroom. Write on a sticky note or write it up on the mirror in lipstick. If you get girlfriend got lipstick, or maybe you have lipstick. I don't <laughs> yeah. Know. Uh, write Find it up there. Lipstick. You know, write it up there and say. It's only it was only a dream. I didn't relapse last night. Calm down, fuck it. And those little sticky notes, I used to have them all over my mirrors, just like little remembrance. And those would actually help. They would actually work because, you know, go in there and fuck. Oh, maybe I didn't relapse last night. Yeah. And then I could play it back and say, you know what, I actually didn't. I don't have to start this bitch all over again. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I got to start all over again, that's not gonna be it. I mean, that could be a slippery slope, though, if you did use and you got it. You didn't use last yeah. night. You're like, fuck, <laughs> yay. Yeah, yeah, it was all a dream. It. <laughs> it was all a dream. <laughs> but that's 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 a good thing that you can do for that. J. Klein might have some better stuff. Um, You know, I don't know the science or the breakdown in the chemistry in the brain. To, uh, what what will I don't know a, a remedy particular that'll say that'll guarantee that they'll be lifted. All I know is continue doing the work, mm-hmm. stay plugged in, stay connected. What 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 is your what is your recovery life looking like? I know when I when I put in more work, I stayed more connected. The thoughts, the dreams, went away. Mm-hmm. I haven't had one in a long time. I don't think about using ever, and I, honestly, I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, however, in the beginning, like, you know, for sure the first four months, very frequent. Um, and then, you know, it was spotty, you know, here and there after that. 
But I remember uh, these dreams, like this is not, this is a very, you really have to experience this to understand the the dream. Like these dreams are, can be so vivid and so real, unlike any other dream probably. And it's, it's also a little bit more personal because, mm-hmm. you know, this is something that we're, we're fighting for. Mm-hmm. You know, this is our life. And I remember uh, I was in a sober house and I wake up gasping for air, gasping for breath because the dream I had was so vivid and so descriptive and so particular. And I woke up just gasping for air because I'm like, oh, my fucking God, Mm -hmm. I just relapsed. I'm about to get kicked out of my sober house. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, what the hell? I'm doing good for once. Yeah. I'm actually doing a good. I'm actually doing the right thing and I'm doing it in. How the fuck did this happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after about a minute, I was like, "Ah, oh, it was, it was just a dream. Just a dream. It's okay. Yeah. It's just a dream." But holy shit, that felt real. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad you said that because you know, like, if you've never had those dreams, and you just have regular dreams, you know, how regular dreams, you can just remember bits and pieces yeah. of it. The dreams he's talking about, yeah. you can run it all fucking back. Yeah, like there's not just bits and pieces. You remember like. The whole thing that happened. Like That's what makes it so real. Yeah. It's like it fucking like, you know, I'll remember dreams weeks ago or w- weeks from now. I'll remember having a dream about something. But on those dreams he's talking about, like you can run it from play to play to play. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit, that really happened. Yeah. I think that's what makes it, it so real is you can run it all back. And it's it's the ones that I would have. It was almost like like an actual movie. Mm hmm the way it played out in a scene by scene wasn't just like a, like a, like a blip or a highlight reel of Mm -hmm. like a, like a dream. No, it was like the whole process and I could almost feel it literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very surreal. Um, I'm grateful. I I, I don't have those in a while. Not saying they won't happen again. Mm -hmm. I don't think they ever fully go away. Uh, my best advice is just stay plugged in, stay connected, stay in that work, do your prayer, do your meditation, you know, and that, that's our best defense against mm. any of this stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Appreciate was, you, buddy. Uh, it was pretty cool. All right. Here's a here's one that'll be about as comfortable as a high colonic. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. There's a butthole. Uh, this comes from Chelsea J. Um, dating and recovery. Uh, dating in recovery, uh, dating a normie, um, dating a recovered addict. Is the, is there, I mean, I can't imagine when it comes to dating that you would want to like box yourself in to one set of a normie or a recover, you know, because you want to keep an open mind. Right. But you also. So I, I guess I, I'm gonna open this one up to you guys. Uh, how how did your process go for for the dating side of things? Mine went smooth as silk. Uh, <laughs> nah. So <laughs> one one thing that I knew and I, I took serious. I said it in the lap, last episode is they say that for the first year you shouldn't do anything. Yeah, like you shouldn't. Have, I did. I really didn't have sex for a year. Sad to say loser yeah. um Dork. <laughs> like a geek fucking nerd but <laughs> i i knew that i was so fucked up yeah that even as i started getting sober i still had to fix me because i still wasn't happy with me right so before you can make anyone else happy you have to be able to be happy with yourself and before i could go off and start dating or anything like that i had to be happy with who i was I had to know that I was going to show up the right ways. And I still don't show up all the time the right ways. I mean, I'm still working on a lot of shit. Um, but I would say that, the look, everybody's going to run their program the whole way, your, your own way. So my program is going to be different. But for me, I would have never started dating in a month or two months or three months or four months. That's just me. Right. Because I wasn't ready to. And... If something happens in that relationship, I don't like if I get attached to somebody and then fucking all of a sudden they're gone or, you know, anything that's going to be more pressure on me 
for me to fucking relapse, to fall in. Well, here it goes again. I'll go fucking get high so I don't have to feel this. So that's one reason that I would say that, you know, for me, I wasn't going to do it. Now, whether I'm going to date someone in the program or normies or anything like that, my girlfriend's in the program and it's worked perfect for us. It's worked great. You know, we hold each other accountable and, you know, we're there for each other. We love each other. And uh, I'm going to probably propose to her soon. Uh-oh. We should do that on a podcast. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, man. You, so I think uh, you're letting the cat out of the bag there, man, because she's mm. sitting right over fucking there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, she already, she asked me for a ring every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> every time I look at her, she's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was hoping that you would give a, uh, you know, a much more wild story about you doing some crazy shit with your girlfriend sitting right over there. Yeah. I thought it would be funny. Um, uh, but it turns out you're just a fucking nerd, man. Yeah, I'm just like, a geek. Just, so, just a big old teddy bear. Yeah, that's what I would say is, you know, I, I don't think if she was a normie, that wouldn't bother me. You know, I would I would say that if you're dating a normie, you can't tell them that they can't drink and shit in front of you. Right. You know, I mean, I've got a buddy that has been sober for six years. And when him and his wife go out, she's going to drink wine or whatever. Yeah. And he just knows that he can't. Yeah. And, and that's OK. Um so I would just be real careful about your sobriety should be number one. Um, you know, your sobriety, like my daughter's number one in life along with my girlfriend. But when it comes to my, if I don't have my sobriety, I don't have a, all those other things yeah. anyways. Yeah. I'm not going to be the person that I am. So I would say, put your sobriety first. You can save on fucking or whatever. I mean, save all that. Watch porn. <laughs> yeah. Porn's a great fucking, yeah. a great way to expand yourself. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah, another thing to get addicted to, though, too. It's so, okay. I still have that one. It's not <laughs> Everything in moderation, guys. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Jay Klein, what you think? Um, well, you know, I've shared uh, quite a bit <laughs> yeah. about my experiences. Um, I will say this first to start off. There's two things that will take an addict out quicker than anything. That's money and relationships. Mm-hmm. So, with that said... It's really hard for me to, I feel like it's really hard for me to give advice on relationships, not because I don't have the experience, (laughs) because I've been to every side of the term. (laughs) We've heard. Yeah. (laughs) You guys need a whole friggin' lifetime docuseries on my shit. Um, Because it's like, I I don't think every relationship is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think there's a one size fits all. Uh, unless it's completely toxic, physically, verbally, psychologically, any of that, yes, get the fuck out right now. Mm-hmm. We don't. We don't do that no more. Ever. Yeah. We should have never did that. We don't. We don't. We don't do that, and we don't ever have to live like that. And if you are out there in one of those, please seek the proper channels to take care of yourself. Please. Um. With that said, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't do it right mm-hmm. initially. Uh, you know, I came into uh, this this bout of recovery and sobriety, getting out of a two year on and off relationship, both inactive addiction and you know she got sober, then I got sober, then I relapsed, and she was still sober, and then I got sober, and she was sober, and then she left me. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> right. Happy thirty days. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> it's whatever, and then you know, because there's a lot of things like. For me, it was like I, I get to prove myself again, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I and we all want to feel loved. We want to feel, you know, a part of something. And we first year, please don't do it, man. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, maybe nine months, you know. Listen to your heart. Listen to your body. Uh, do the work first before doing anything. Like do the work, because again, thank God for those uh, those couple experiences, and thank God they went the way they did. Because I would have robbed myself of an opportunity to find me. Yeah. To to know me. To love me. Because I can't love nobody else unless I love myself. Mm-hmm. I can't find myself in someone else. It doesn't yeah. work like that. That's right. So I've heard success stories of addicts dating normies. And they're great. And it works perfectly. I've heard uh, addicts dating normies. And it's been not so good. Mm-hmm. I've heard uh, people meeting in the rooms, like my mom and my stepdad been married 20 plus years. Uh, 
you know, I've, people I know as friends, meeting, you know, these guys, mm -hmm. uh, meeting and having great relationships. I've also heard of two addicts meeting each other, uh, no matter what length of sobriety, and it was the most toxic thing they've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what it comes down to is there's there's a foundation and a basis of, of a relationship that makes it healthy, and that's communication, love, respect, honor, understanding, trust. Trust, big one. Yeah, uh, that always yeah. starts with you. You know, like that, I mean, the, the well, mind, it takes two. Right, right. But if, I mean, the, I had to learn this through a, a pretty painful divorce myself, but it's like, if I'm not happy, then how happy can I make my kids? Right. You know, and putting my kids first through my whole life. And you, you want to say that all the time. You mm -hmm. think that's what you need to be wired up to do mm -hmm. as, as being a dad. And I, I can probably extend this to being a partner or a husband or a wife mm -hmm. or whatever. But you're, if you're not happy with yourself and then those kids or other people are looking up to you and you're not happy, mm -hmm. how happy are they? You, you, know, right. you know what I mean? So yeah, it's like sure. that there is a little bit of... It's it's not selfish to make yourself happy. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's selfless because you have so many other people that are looking after you. So right. I think an empty cup can't help fill another cup. Right. Know? I think we all we've all probably known people that stayed in relationships because of their kids. Yeah. And like that's to to me. I mean, look, I'm I'm not a fucking whiz at this, but. You bring your kids through. It's like what you said. They know that you're not happy. Right. And then they're seeing you not happy. How happy are they? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you real quick. Um, the second hardest time I had during my sobriety, I was a year sober. And my girlfriend said, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. And that was the hardest night that I probably had in sobriety. And I was a year sober. Yeah. If I would have been a month or two months or three months sober, there's no telling what I would have went and did. But that, that one year sober, I went and worked out. I called some people. I started talking to God, and I just got through that night. And then she realized that she had hit a winning lottery ticket, and she came yeah, back to me. You know, <laughs> that's, that's the fucking deal. Scratch it off, baby. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's the deal. And I will say, like, it's important because there's, there's other conversations that are to be had with two mm -hmm. people in a relationship that are in recovery, mm -hmm. more so than – two normies or yeah yeah because there's questions you got to establish like you don't have to say this in a normal relationship but what happens if one of us relapses mm -hmm. those are questions that need to be asked or yeah. should be asked um it's important that you guys work your own program mm -hmm. uh yeah i i think it's okay to go to meetings together but maybe you know make sure y'all go to some separate meetings too get a men's meeting in for for the men and a women's meeting for the women yeah i think it's important because there's some things that you may not want to share not saying that uh, to not not to be open but there's things that can be shared in a different manner right in a different form yeah, yeah. and i think that's important and not making someone your higher power uh, that's a big one if you're not trying to build and grow together and establish communication and embody and embrace uh healthy coping mechanisms healthy relationships mm. uh don't settle you don't gotta settle yeah yeah you know you don't need a relationship you don't you shouldn't ever need anybody i want you in my life because i want you in my life not because you have this or have that mm. uh but because we have this yeah that's love so, authenticity something something meaningful yeah shout out eric white yeah <laughs> something uh we do is like if i have to check your phone i'm not going to be in this fucking relationship right, yeah that was my past right i fucking went through all the phones back then yeah. i ain't doing that shit ever again no. yeah that's too stressful yeah fuck yeah, all dude. that it's pretty wild i think we should change this fucking to sobri from sobriety to being like fucking self-help and relationship therapist <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, like I said, we can do a whole docu series, you know, put it on I, Netflix, I, I, Hulu. Like, I really felt like that was some Doctor Phil shit that we yeah. just went on a little yeah. bit. But that was a great question. We should invite some exes uh, on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna right. talk about some healing. Yeah, let, man. Let's Woo. fucking heal together right yeah. now. Fuck uh. that. Fuck off. Right? <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Um, <laughs> fuck, they, <off. laughs> fuck that. Thank you, Chelsea. Thanks, uh, Chelsea. Thanks, that Chelsea. Was, that was amazing. Um, all right. Next question from Rick G. Um, what addiction does the parents? And um, this one's, I, I mean, I don't have any experience with this um, or, and not yet, hope, you know, hopefully. Um, but I don't think we could possibly know the totality that our wreckage and our addiction has caused uh, our parents. Our parents. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, yeah, a lot of hurt, a lot of worry. You know, we got to the point where my mom was happy I was in jail. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's in jail. Thank goodness. I know yeah. he's not going to die. I know no, he's, he's not, not going to die. Dude. I know where he's at. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's wild, dude. To where you she know. don't even want to bail you out because she knows you're safer there. Right. Right. And, you know, there was a time where my mom told me, she said, you know, if you would have overdosed or died... I don't know if I would have uh, mm -hmm. been around either. Yeah. Man. Damn. And Fuck. she has two other kids. But I relate to that, man. Like, I just put myself in that and yeah. trying to put myself in that shoe, in those shoes. I grew up, uh, you know, with predominantly with a, with a single mom until she met my stepdad. But even then, for the first few years, it was still like, you know, because if you've ever been in a stepdad relationship, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it can be a process to get work through that. Cause it's like, it's just, it's just different. Yeah. 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 And that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I was a mama's boy, man. And she, she played both roles very, very well. And, um, she worked her ass off to, uh, give me a life that, uh, she never got to have mm -hmm. sacrificed a lot. And, uh, there's a lot of shame and guilt over that. Cause, I basically said, fuck you. Yeah, man. I mean. That doesn't mean shit to me. Uh, fuck. You know what means something to me? Getting high. Getting my dope. Like, <laughs> I've hurt my mom in many ways, dude. Things I'm not going to divulge here because. I'll tell you, um, as a parent, my daughter's eight. And I could never imagine watching her go through addiction because I'm always going to help my daughter. I mean, I could not imagine telling her, no, I can't do it. Right. And if I know that she's using, then I have to set boundaries on that. And I've got to set a good foundation to where, no, I can't help you. I can't fucking give you money. I can't do this. I can't do that. So, that would be the fucking hardest thing that I could ever fucking go through. And, you know, during my addiction, I put my mom through all that. Like, probably not as bad as I could have. But, you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't do as a son. Like, when I talk to her now, she's like, you know what I love about talking to you now is you don't yell at me anymore. You don't lose your, you don't lose your cool with me anymore. We can actually have conversations. And I didn't even realize I used to yell at her all the fucking time, you know, like fucking mom, just send me some fucking money. Just pay my fucking, just pay my rent, yeah. you know, um, that type shit. So it's, um, I, I would tell, for, I would say for parents, if you don't understand addiction, go to some meetings, probably even go to some Al-Anon meetings, because I know as a parent, a lot of times we can enable, I, I just look, we can enable anybody. But as a parent, I'm sure you can very well be a big enabler because you want the best for your kids and you want to make sure that they fucking have food or they have money. Um, but you got to remember that every time you help them in one of those ways, you might be buying them dope. So I would say, like, if your kid's reaching out for food or for money, fucking order them some food and have it delivered to them. Don't give them any money. Um, if your kid's in jail, like, my, my brother went through this where... It's the same thing you said. He was he was happy that his son was in jail because he didn't have to worry about him. He didn't have to worry about getting a phone call at 6 in the morning that he's no longer here. You know, he told me personally, he said, you know, the, the 
if my son's not here, I don't know what I'll do, you know? And that's fuck. That's got to suck as a parent. Man. You know, could, uh, could you imagine even like what my mom was going through? No, she's in recovery no. and sobriety long term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was in a relationship with my biological father and had to go through addiction with him. Mm-hmm. Right. And then he died in 2001. Yeah. I couldn't imagine the place she was in of the, the push and pull of plus just me being her son. Mm-hmm. I've pushed and forced everyone to give up on me. Mm-hmm. The only one that didn't was her. Mm-hmm. And that's the crazy thing is, you know, in addiction, we think we have all these fucking friends, yeah. all these fucking people, like all these people. I used to hang out with, um, you know, a lot of different people, um, a lot of women that used to do a lot of meth. We called them Shardashians. 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 <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, I wanted to say that so bad. But um, <laughs> on a serious note, like the things that we put people through during addiction we don't even fucking care you know especially parents and you know to be able to you just get i would say just try not to enable them try to learn about the addiction especially if you don't know much about it um and just understand that you know you got to set set healthy boundaries yeah you got to set boundaries so they don't take advantage of you because at the end of the day all the friends that we think we have our parents are the ones that are there at the end, no matter what. Like my dad, I, I never said this. My dad died from addiction. He died from cirrhosis of the liver when he was 54. I was 29. I didn't understand addiction at all then. And like when they were telling him, look, if you don't stop drinking, you're going to die. I didn't understand how he couldn't stop. Right. Until I became a meth addict. And I was like, oh, it makes a lot of sense. It's real hard to stop. Right. So I would say like catch some meetings, you know, learn from other people in those meetings that have went through it that can actually relate their story to you because in a community is where you find, I think sometimes the most peace with what you're dealing with. Yeah. So, uh, there's real power in relatability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you it know, a village. I, I, um, I went to a meeting with you guys, um, it's fucking awesome. last week, <laughs> you know? And, uh, so I, I had been to a couple other meetings in the round rock area mm-hmm. where, you know, where I li- to kind of prepare myself for this, but I was more like a fly on the wall mm. in there. Um, this was one that I got kind of involved in, right? Like a little bit. I raised my hand that I was the first one being there and all of that. So this was the, got I, a I really, book. I counted Yeah, I got the books, all, all the, the shit, the whole nine. All the pamphlets. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and I'm reading them. I'm going through them. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to honor, I'm going to honor what you guys go through. But I, I really, probably the next time that I go, I will share this because, you know, I've grown to love you both mm-hmm. and um and i think i i left there on the way home thinking how happy and thankful that i was that you had that place to go to mm-hmm. and also how thankful and happy that that place was to have you both there mm. and yeah. it was it's pretty neat so yeah uh but as a parent fuck dude mm. yeah like i I mean, I couldn't imagine just like you, but it, 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 I, it's got to be a different level for you going through it and then mm. thinking about your kid going through it. And mm. I, I, I guess the one thing that I would say is like, you also have to be honest too. I mm. would think that as a parent, it would be incredibly hard to say my little boy or little girl is using mm. no way they're no, no. Yeah. Like they don't want to believe it. Right. And so it's like, acceptance you yeah. know last you teach your kid it. all about it my daughter's eight she knows all about drugs yeah she does because a lot of people in the rooms started doing drugs when they were nine or ten or eleven years old mm-hmm. and they're they're never too early to learn about it um well she got a little bit of a, of a she got she got a yeah she it, got a front row room. seat to a, a right. bunch so, of fuckery so well yeah I mean, I, I took, uh, my, my daughters, so I, I have a stepdaughter too. Um, and she, we went to Vegas and I wanted to let them do 22, 21 year old shit in Vegas without mom and dad looking yeah, after yeah. them. So, I, but I, you know, fentanyl, I was like, look, we're in Vegas. I'm sending you out with some money and go have a good time without mom and dad. You guys do your thing. And I just had the most blunt conversation. I was like, don't do any fucking drugs. Mm-hmm. Like, 
just don't don't fucking do cocaine like if you want some pot let's go to the dispensary <laughs> get it nice and packaged up you know like fucking whatever yeah but uh, it was like the most blunt i'd uh, just don't do cocaine girls just <laughs> yeah. don't just don't fucking do you please like yeah. just do me that favor this yeah, one yeah. night like yeah that's all i ask here's money uh, so uh, again accepting the fact that it is real and accepting the fact that it could happen and it, that it might be happening is very important and mm-hmm. then also knowing that you have the resources you know you have this podcast our lines are open all the goddamn mm-hmm. like i mean it's open all the time yeah and um and we will reach out and we will answer yeah we yeah, will yeah, answer this, man this is what we do this for even if you're in finland Shout, shout out, out to, to Finland. Shout out Finland. to Finland. We, got an international dude. Finland we, we have a guy that Let's subscribed in go. fucking Finland. Let's go. Like, you, send us those DMs. Where are you yes. from? Let, let us yeah. know where, where we're Check getting. Check in us. with us. Yeah, us. dude. That, awesome. that was the wildest shit that I think I've ever seen. But that was I, awesome. We got that, gave, re- that gave me the boner of the month. Yeah, dude, for sure. <laughs> Seeing we uh, had a, a guy in Finland, I'm like, fucking swing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That was 5,000 awesome. miles away. You can probably see the boner from here. The. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> oh, man. so They're the uh <laughs> you know comments too that came in mm. you know there was a, a young lady on there that commented you know this really makes me feel like i'm not alone and that, and in that moment when i read that i was like holy shit dude this is that is exactly why we fucking do this well, we started is is for that comment right mm. there and i told her that i responded back to her um and then on the other end of that, you know, bringing back into the levity, uh, we had another guy that we were talking to and he was like, dude, I fucking love the podcast and this is awesome. And when you looked into that camera and you told your illegitimate children to go fuck themselves, <laughs> me and my boy just laughed our asses off. I also do it for those comments. Yeah, so, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like this, uh, this thing's, uh, this thing spreading out. It's, one of the things in my life that I'm proud of, I had my son in the last episode mm-hmm. sitting back there, my two sons sitting back there uh, laughing and giggling. And uh, and it's like the one thing that I think I've ever done in my life mm. that, you know, they look and they're like, That's dude, this is pretty fucking, fucking cool. Yeah. Like, this is dope, you know? So We're building this from ground zero. Yeah. And, and we're going to build this into a fucking empire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, and we and do with it, all of y'all and we're gonna do it for and we're doing it for all the right fucking reasons yes. i promise you that we are mm-hmm. so um you got with, any more there, there's a couple more here man but you want to push them off I, I, yeah we'll push them off we're gonna uh, push them off I, I will address the the next two whose are they say the name so from john m uh mm-hmm. there's three more uh john m shell t and kelsey s mm-hmm. We'll, we'll get, get to, to you guys. 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 I recognize you. I want you to know that we recognize yes. you. We just uh, we're running out of time. It's fucking Easter Sunday. We gotta go. We gotta go get some fucking Easter eggs, man. Yeah, he's gotta go on a scavenger hunt. Yeah, I gotta go carpet. He's gotta farm. go hide from fucking kids that are gonna be knocking on the door saying, "Are you my dad? Yeah. Why did I only get a dollar in this egg? <laughs> <laughs> are we going Easter egg hunting, yeah. Dad? Yeah. Fuck you. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Absolutely not. All right. Uh, so with that, episode five in the fucking game. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe. Tell your fucking friends about it. Share it. Share the shit out of it. Put it on your social media. Hit the bell. Hit, Hit the, the fucking, fucking bell. bell. Uh, our our homie in Finland, dude. Shout the fuck out. Get, get, uh, so happy that yeah. that this has gone there. So uh, with that being said, mm-hmm. two addicts and a moron. Joey the moron. Jay Klein. Mike Stewboy O'Brien. Love y'all. Out. Love you. Love y'all.